What if consciousness isn't what you think it is? Let's delve into this intriguing mystery. Consciousness, in its most basic sense, refers to our awareness, our perception of the world, and our place within it. It's an enigma, a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. It's not something we do, but rather something we become. We each have privileged access to our own consciousness, a unique perspective that no one else can truly share or fully comprehend. It's like being an island in an immense ocean observing the world through our own private lens. Yet, for all its individuality, consciousness isn't a solitary phenomenon. It's a collective tapestry woven from countless threads of individual experiences and perceptions. Yet it's not something we can train for or excel at. We don't do consciousness, we simply become conscious. This raises a tantalizing question. What exactly is consciousness? The quest to understand consciousness takes us into the fascinating realm of neuroscience. Scene script. Dive into the human brain, the command center for our consciousness. Let's start by acknowledging the brain's complexity. It's a vast network of neurons with different areas contributing to different facets of our conscious experience. Clinical observations have shown us that some parts of the brain, like various sections of the cerebral cortex, are indispensable for consciousness. These areas contribute to different modalities and sub-modalities of consciousness, allowing us to perceive, process and respond to the world around us. In contrast, some regions, despite housing more neurons, do not appear to play a significant role in consciousness. Take the cerebellum, for instance. It's densely packed with neurons, yet it doesn't contribute to consciousness in the same way the cerebral cortex does. But the brain's role in consciousness doesn't stop at its structure. How it functions is equally critical. Consider this. During slow-wave sleep or generalized seizures, the brain is just as active, if not more so, than during wakefulness. Yet, consciousness is greatly reduced. Why? That's a question that continues to baffle neuroscientists. To comprehend this phenomenon, we can't rely solely on empirical observations. We need a principled theoretical approach that complements our understanding of the neural correlates of consciousness. Without this, it would be challenging to discern the extent of consciousness present in various neurological conditions such as akinetic mutism, psychomotor seizures, or sleepwalking, or even to understand the level of consciousness in newborn babies and animals. To put it simply, consciousness is not just about having a brain, it's about how that brain functions, how its different parts work together to create our perceptions, our thoughts, our emotions, it's about how this intricate network of neurons gives rise to the unique experience of being aware, of being conscious. So, while each person has privileged access to their own consciousness, it remains a complex, private phenomenon. It's not something easily observable or quantifiable, unlike many other subjects of scientific study. Yet, it's this very mystery, this enigma, that makes the exploration of consciousness so fascinating. Consciousness, it seems, is intricately tied to the complex workings of our brain. Scene script. Unraveling the puzzle of consciousness requires a blend of disciplines. Indeed, understanding consciousness is not a one-way street. It's an intricate labyrinth demanding a multifaceted approach. It's not just about identifying which areas of the brain light up when we're aware, but also about deciphering why and how these regions contribute to our conscious experiences. While empirical observations provide us with valuable data, they are akin to scattered pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. To assemble these pieces into a coherent picture, we need a solid, theoretical framework. This framework helps us interpret our observations, guiding us towards meaningful conclusions about the nature of consciousness. Now, how do we construct this theoretical framework? The answer lies in interdisciplinary research. Firstly, neuroscience offers a wealth of knowledge about the brain's structure and functions. It helps us understand the biological basis of consciousness, the neural activities underpinning our thoughts, feelings, and perceptions. Philosophy of the mind, on the other hand, 
encourages us to ponder the abstract concepts related to consciousness. It nudges us to question the very nature of awareness, perception, and selfhood. It's a discipline that brings depth to our understanding by asking the why and how of consciousness. Phenomenology complements these disciplines by focusing on the subjective experience of consciousness. It delves into how we perceive and interpret the world around us, providing insights into the personal, experiential aspect of consciousness. Meanwhile, psychology adds another layer of complexity, exploring how consciousness influences our behavior, emotions, and social interactions. It bridges the gap between the biological and the subjective, linking our internal experiences with our external actions. Lastly, evolutionary biology lends a historical perspective. It traces the origins of consciousness, shedding light on how and why it might have evolved over time. By integrating these diverse disciplines, we can construct a comprehensive theory about the nature of consciousness. This theory can help us better understand not just ourselves, but also the world we inhabit. As we continue to explore, the enigma of consciousness promises to keep us on the edge of discovery, reminding us of the limitless potential of the human mind.